Film Autopsy. Ah, it gets better every time. It gets better every week. Look at that. Awesome, man. Hell yeah. Open hands. Good job. Yeah. Yeah. Good job, man. What is going on? It's your boy Preston, Fat Samurai Guy, back again with another episode of Action Film Autopsy with the one and only Kung Fu Santa himself, Rick Myers. Rick, welcome back, brother. Nice to be here on Halloween Eve. Yes, yes. yes indeed. Yes. Happy Halloween y, everyone. Yeah, that's we're right. Gonna, we're going to get it out of the way now. <laughs> we'll be <laughs> streaming tomorrow. Uh, but yeah, it's good to see everyone. We got Jake Hall in the house. There Jake. we go. Hey, hey, more certified badass channel members. What is going on? Michael Gonzalez. Hey, hey, hey. We got Champ from Louisiana. He's ready for some action film autopsy. And we have a little extra bonus awesomeness at the end of uh, the, the episode today. Yes, we're going to talk about Rick's uh, top 10 horror films. Yes, yes. We got a little extra bonus just for all you horror fans out there. And stay tuned because I'm sure it'll be controversial. <laughs> it may, 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 may be, but since we have everybody here right now, uh, let's remind everyone that they can. You want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? Oh, you want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? You want a piece of me? You got it. Get a piece of Rick. Awesome, awesome, awesome. Listen. If you follow me on Facebook, you also knew I got rid of the rest of my DVDs. I, after Michael Woods and uh, my other friend, Bernard Briggs, got 300 of my DVDs. The remaining 200 I put up for clearance on Facebook, and you all came through. I sent these DVDs all over the country and the world. I sent some to Belgium. I sent some to Denmark. And now I have empty shelves that I'm able to fill up with new books and other fun things, but not DVDs. Just yes. call me, just call me Best Buy. There you go. <laughs> well, you are, you are uh, literally Best Buy now, Rick, because they, you know, they're going to be stopping selling physical media anyway. That's, so. that's why I decided to get rid of all of mine because yeah. it just sort of takes up space at this point. Yeah. So if you guys want a piece of Rick's collection, check the description box below. Send you straight to the shop, and you can get all some good, awesome goodies there, autographs, all that cool stuff. So, so. I, and hurry up, I just uh, my 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 guy there, my curator at uh, Chimera Publishing. He said he just sold uh, my uh, classic um, Mighty Mouse collectible. Oh wow! For, for big bucks. Wow, gee, yeah. see, there's a lot of cool stuff there. You got to check it cool out. Stuff. Photos right. and all sorts of things. Yeah, here Rick comes to save the day. That's right. <laughs> well, okay. We got Br Brian yep. in the house. Happy Halloween, Brian. Yeah. There we go. There we go. Sean saying, hello, Fat Samurai guy. And KFS, good to Talk see to everyone. Yes, yes. Good Who's to see everyone in. <laughs> All right. So we have some shows and movies that Rick was going to discuss today. And then again, don't forget, we got a little bonus at the end. So make sure you guys stay tuned. And uh, right off the bat, do you want to get started, Rick, with the first one? Yeah. Let, well, since, you know, of course, October is the big month for horror movies and horror shows and horror everything. Everything is doing the Halloween thing for the month of October. Yeah. So I thought it was going to be a tough month for me because, you know, it's like that's not that's not the first stuff I go to, even though I've, I've been editor of Famous Monsters magazine. I've been editor of Movie Monsters magazines. I've written five horror novels. I've, I've written non, a nonfiction book on horror exploitation films. I worked in horror movies. I was the co-writer, although I'm, I'm listed in the credits as background research, which is the secret word they give to secret co-writers, um, <laughs> uh, on Just Before Dawn, one of the best to my mind, one of the best slasher movies ever made. Matter of fact, it was a pioneer of the slasher movie film way back when, directed Ooh. by Jeff Lieberman. So I've worked in all this stuff, but it's not something I gravitate to naturally. So I thought I was going to have a tough time this week, uh, this month. No, yeah. I was very pleasantly surprised. And we're going to start with the my favorite horror of the month. I try to watch a bunch of other horror and slasher and killer movies and stuff, and I'm going, oh, no, not my cup of tea. But these two I got into and was more than pleasantly surprised by. So I've heard, 
Yeah, yeah, I've heard positive things on both of these, but yeah, let's talk about the first one here. Saw X Jigsaw. Shall we play a game? My t- I tell you, one of the thing I immediately noticed about Saw X is if you turn the title upside down, do you know what it spells? X was Xmas. <laughs> oh, Xmas. Xmas. X was. <laughs> it's Xmas. It ah. says it's perfect for Kung Fu Santa. There you go. It's, it spells Xmas. <laughs> they. What I'm really loving about the horror movies now is that everybody from Bloomhouse and A24 and everybody else is is noticing that the rest of them are all the same, and the way that they're going to be better yeah. is that they're going to make these m- m- movies smarter. You know me, I'm not badass, I'm wise ass or smart ass. Yeah, yeah. And so Saw X it's it's done by the whole Saw team. There's nobody really, I mean it's it's Kevin Grutert who is the editor I think of almost all the Saw movies and all the Saw movies have been very well edited. But now he's moving into and he, I think the last two movies I think he directed and, and he came back, he was brought back for this one. And it's, yeah. it's the writers are, again, the same people who worked on the other. But each one, they've been given permission not to make the same old movie. Because okay. I think, was it last week I was talking about the slasher movies? Producers love slasher movies because the audience will accept anything you give them. So now the song guys go, we're not going to do, we're not going to do the same old stuff. We're going to get it better. I thought they were going to do that on the last one, the one that Chris Rock was involved in. Spiral. Yeah, yeah. Spiral, because that could have been just so great, and it wasn't. It was just mm. so mediocre. And, and the whole idea was having a a great black comedian do his take on horror, the way Get Out was done mm-hmm. and Nope was done by the great uh, Peel. Jordan Peele. Yeah, Jordan, yeah. But no, Chris Brock, you know, just made, and he made the villain a, a, a black guy and was like, no, 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 no. That The whole idea is that you wanted to get against. But anyway, so yeah, that yeah. was a huge disappointment. So I thought Saw X was just going to be more of the same. Right. What they did, which was genius, is it's it's a, it's a direct sequel to the original Shaw. Shaw, uh, Saw, okay. And it uses the star of, Shaw, of Saw, I'm going to keep saying Shaw because I'm thinking of the Shaw brothers. Yeah, yeah. You guys don't know, thanks to Frank, they did a documentary with me, which appears on the new Shaw Brothers Volume 3 set from the the Shout Factory. So now I'm trying to say Saw, but all I can think about is Shaw. But in any case, so Saw X, Saw 10 uses Tobin Bell, wonderful yes. actor. Oh, yeah. And the producer of the film said the biggest mistake we ever made on this series was killing that character off. Because the whole idea is he has cancer. The character has cancer. Right. So he, you know, he pushed up his desire to teach people internal lessons. Yeah. But then in the sequels, he's gone. And they have all these, uh, you know, lookalikes and all these guys who want to be like and and Copycats. Yeah, yeah, thank yeah. You. But here they bring him back. That's awesome. And from the very first moment the camera rests on his face, the whole energy of the film changes. He he is just an amazing charismatic charismatic character. It just he just emanates tragedy. He emanates uh, pain. Mm-hmm. He emanates hope. It's just so great. And the whole plot line is about him taking revenge on people who take advantage of him because he has cancer. I mean, this is nothing new from, I think this is in the trailers as well. Some people who say they have a miracle cure. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Cheat him out of a quarter of a million dollars. And so the rest of the movie is him going, you've been a naughty boy, Clement. (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> it's time to nail your head to the floor <laughs> and payback payback. And that's the blood. I mean, it's my favorite part of the movie is the first quarter, which most people say, well, you have to get through the first quarter and then it takes off. It certainly does. They have a dream sequence, which they um, a portray on the poster to keep you going through the first quarter. But the first quarter was my favorite part because it it establishes the foundation builds it of up. the movie 
Right. And, and then Bill then immediately gets into loads and loads and loads of blood. Yes. And, and I'm sold. Yeah. But the, <laughs> but the thing is that it, the blood didn't bother me because yeah. it, they basically say, this is what you're going to get. Right. And right, he's right. doing it for a good purpose. And then it turns into a mystery. It becomes nice. a spy, ver not a spy versus spy, but because there's no heroes in this. These are right, all right, terrible right. human beings. Yeah. These are all villains, uh, but it's villain versus villain. And you're going to see who wins. Yeah. And it's just That's awesome. And so there's a lot of, again, you know what I love? Yeah. Not just mind candy. Right. Not, excuse me, not just eye candy. Mind, mind candy. candy. Yeah. This has got loads of mind and it's perfect for Halloween because mind candy. Mind candy, blood candy, <laughs> mind candy. It was, it was just terrific. And by the end of it, I'm just going, I really hope that they do. I forgot what series we, one of one of you watchers could tell me about it. It was a series that realized they had made a mistake and they should have done something. They should have done a bunch of sequels. Hmm. So I think, I hope they do that. I hope they keep Tobin, the Tobin Bell character alive. Yeah. And they do a whole bunch of these movies in between Saw 1 and 2. Sure. Now, who knows how much time passed between 1 and 2. So yeah, you know, just keep them why going. not? I'll watch 11, I'll watch 12, I don't care. Yeah. It, was, right. it was very good and the action was very good. It was, um, yeah, there was, no, there was no fights per se, but it was mental yeah. action. Again, right. for me, that's an action movie. Mind candy, mind candy. Yeah, 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 yeah. Good movie. Nice, nice, awesome. Uh, but uh, speaking of going back a little bit, when you mentioned Frank Jang and uh, congrats on their documentary for the Shaw Brothers box set, that's awesome. And also but, the one, yeah, go ahead. But uh, Shin here, he just says, "Happy Halloween!" I got the Vinegar Syndrome Blu-ray edition this afternoon. He enjoyed uh, you and Frank's commentary. No, no, it's the Frank, it's the Frank Jang commentary with Rick Myers. Yeah, yeah, it's yeah, not yeah. my commentary. Believe yeah. me. Yeah. I just had to watch him complain because he wanted to. I think I told you about this. He wanted to do the uh, audio commentary at the pool yeah. during San Diego Comic Con, and then was upset when guys who wanted to use the pool came close to us. And I'm going, yeah. well, "We're in you know, what? Oh, yeah. Frank! Oh, Frank! <laughs> but thank you for including me on that commentary. Yeah. Yeah. Hey, hey, Brian! Brian. Hey, Action! Good to see everyone here. Yeah, so Love. definitely watch Saw X, nice. and let me let me know what you think of it. If you're a big okay. Saw fan, because yeah. I wasn't a big Saw fan after he died, after number one. I really love number one. I saw that at the very beginning. Another yeah. great mystery. I'll have to play a catch up because to be honest, I forgot which one I left off on. I but don't again, know. It's five, six, five. I don't remember. So I got to catch up. I say up. skip everything. Just skip okay. it. Just watch X. Just nice. watch X. All right. Next up we have is Totally Killer. Like gag me with a spoon. Okay. This is a this is very similar to uh, some of my favorite horror movies, which are like Scream, yeah, and uh, and and uh, Freaky. It's uh -huh. it's because it's more than the thing I loved about Scream is it was not only a Playfair mystery, it was not yeah. only a Playfair slasher film, but it was a satire of slasher films at the same time. So Totally Killer is a lot of movies in once. It's a double slasher film, a uh, slasher movie. It's okay. a it's a Back to the Future. It's a um, it's a, a Groundhog Day. It's a wow. black comedy done by a great one of my favorite comedy people. It's directed by Nanachka Khan, who made one of my favorite uh, television shows, my cult television shows called Don't Trust the Bee in Apartment Twenty Three. That was her television show, and I love that show. But then she did Fresh Off the Boat, and now most recently she did. She was the uh, showrunner on Young Rock with Dwayne Johnson. Oh, okay. So she did this movie with a with uh, um, yeah, and with James Michalop Michalopoulos, who which is his first time as an action choreographer. Other time, uh, all his other jobs have been stuntmen. So this is his first chance. To do the actual choreography, okay. and so and they also have the wonderful Kiernan Shipka and Olivia Holt playing the the characters, the main characters who are trying to. It's just a great movie. Nice. It's so much fun. The satire is awesome. It's eighty satire. It really and it's also Freaky Friday. 
It's so many movies all at once with good action, legitimate slasher stuff, and really good mystery stuff. I was just like, wow, they made these movies for me. I can come back <laughs> to the slasher genre, yeah. what I call the terror genre or the murder genre. Yeah, yeah. Well, this shot oh, yeah. right here, I was already sold. I was like, whoa, what is this? This looks awesome. Oh, yeah. You, you t and they have some fights in the time machine she winds up in, which are really well done. And everybody is clearly saying, all right, this is our chance to show off. And the choreographer does it. The director does it. The writer does it. The actors do it. It's, it's, a, it's a fine film. I may watch nice. it again. Let's go. Yeah. All right. Totally killer. Nice. Copy that. Totally now, killer is totally killer. There you go. There you go. Now, your favorite genre of all time, bad assassins, <laughs> bad assassins. But is the action worthwhile for, not to be confused with the upcoming Ana de Armas ballerina, right. but uh, ballerina. The John. The, this is not the John Wick spinoff. I thought it right. was. Originally, when, I, when you told me about it, I thought it was the spinoff. It's not the spinoff. Right. It's no. a Korean... It's in the Korea Korean hitman tradition. Yes, they had they had one. I think we talked about last episode of the episode before, and this is a new one. And man, it starts off great. Oh, the I'm opening sequence in okay. this thing was terrific. The fight scene. Let's see. It's um, uh, the director is Chung Hyung Lee. I couldn't find. Uh, I couldn't find the choreographer uh, of the fight scenes because uh, yeah. when you go to IMDb with a Korean film, they go, oh, "No, we don't, we're not going to do that." And I and I and I there's a Chinese uh, IMDb, but I couldn't find a Korean IMDb. I'm, there must be one, but I haven't found it yet. So I don't know who choreographed this, but the opening sequence is very similar, and I thought it was being directed by the same guy who did Baby Assassins, which is on Welgo. It has that kind of choreography. Oh, really? You know, that tight... Kensuke. Kensuke, yeah. yeah. Yeah, but no, it's it's a Korean film. But it starts... I got something in my eye. I got, uh, I got uh, fighting in my eye. But in any case, <laughs> uh, it starts off in very similarly to Baby Assassins. Baby Assassins also starts off in a convenience store, uh, like a 7-Eleven. Right. This is a Korean one. So it starts off in that a bunch of guys come in. This is this is from the climax. We'll get to that's the last 20 minutes of the movie. Um, it starts in the convenience store. Two guys come in. There's a guy who's just like playing a video game. The guy who works at the convenience store. A bunch of guys come in, and the first thing that happens is they punch him right in the eye. Which okay. is like, and he's like, oh, and yeah. they start ripping it off and taking all the money, and suddenly. They hear a female voice go, excuse me, could you give me change for this? <laughs> yeah. And the and the guys who are robbing him, the little the gang, it turns out to be like four or five guys in the place. They find that there's this girl just standing in between them, like they hadn't seen her before. And already I'm going, ooh, she's good. She's able to, you know, like sneak in. Nice. And um, and 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 the, <laughs> the guy behind the counter with a hurt eye, with a black eye, just sort of go, you know. And, he goes to go for the cash register, but meanwhile, they're still taking money out of the cash register and putting it in their bag. And she looks down at where they're putting it in the bag and goes, oh, I'll get my change out of this. And she starts getting the change out of the bag. And the, and the gang guys are looking at each other like, who, who is this B in apartment 23? Who is this? And so the guy who's, take, who's in the front, who's the boss man, he looks at the rest of the gang and sort of like makes an a nod toward the girl and the guy and you see the guy behind takes out his knife and goes for the girl but you know they're shooting from here up and the knife seemingly goes in and the guy behind the counter is like and then the girl just sort of looks at him the camera goes down their heads go down she's holding a can of pea peaches <laughs> He's okay. holding a can of peaches <laughs> right where the knife was. And the knife yeah. went into the can of peaches. Yeah. And they all look at her. And then she moves. She starts. It's one of the best fights with a female protagonist that I've seen. Yes. Because she doesn't do anything stupid. 
she uses she's well this is again at the end okay i'll tell you about what the ending too all right she uses the rather than using her fist which is dumb because she can hurt her fist right she keeps her hand on the can and uses the can as her fist and all also right. also uses the knife in the can and she's just turn she's just doing the whole jackie chan spinning thing and what's great is when she's spinning that powers her leg she doesn't do one of those stupid things that all the white girls do in the Amazon action movies, white girls, uh, the, the American Amazon Netflix action movies with women as the leads, because they sort of stand in one place. They do the Taekwondo kind of kick where they just sort of have, they have an anchored leg and they, uh, their other leg goes out. And the anchored leg is ridiculous because all you have to do is hit that and they're defeated. But in any case, she doesn't do that. She lets her spinning power her kick. Because she just brings her leg up and wham. Yeah. It's like I'm going, oh, this is great. This is going to be the greatest movie I've ever seen. Uh oh. Nope. God damn it. <laughs> and immediately damn thereafter, it. right after that fight scene, she yeah. goes from being smart. It turns out, much to my surprise, that that fight scene was a flashback. They clearly, you see later in the film where that scene went. Okay. But they were very smart because they said, because from here on in, it's, I think it's an hour and 46 minutes long. And for the next, you know, uh, 50 minutes, 55 minutes, she is just a miserable, sad, more morose. I don't want to call her a bee, but <laughs> she's just, all right. She's a morose bitch. Yeah. From then on, from that, when she goes back, the whole idea is that she's not the ballerina. Okay. She's taking revenge for the ballerina okay. who commits suicide because of reasons you'll see in the movie. Right. And, and she spends a lot of time wandering through the movie, being really miserable and depressed. <sighs> And you know, it's like, oh man, oh wow, I gotta find out what's why why should I I hardly knew this girl who you know committed suicide and asked me is asking me because she's supposedly the girl's supposedly an ex-bodyguard. And I'm going, well, if she has a can of pe peaches with her all the time, that would be great, or even a can of peas. I don't care. <laughs> she could be the the can bodyguard. Yeah. But finally, in the last, and then you see where the when the fight scene came in, and they skip over it, and she goes back to being, oh, I'm so depressed. And they get to the finale, when she finally is able to get to where she wants to go. She finds the villains. The villains are, the villains are all, and look at their face. Look at her face. Again, it's just like frozen. She has that frozen face. And the villains are all the traffickers. They're gun traffickers, drug traffickers, Human traffickers. Yeah, yeah. Uh, everything. It's it's a huge Korean crime syndicate, and they've been building up. Uh, they've yeah. By the way, you guys who are watching, vote if I can. I, if I uh, spoiler alert, because I'm going to tell you because there's a moment when she finally faces this guy who's been built up beautifully. Oh he's, no! He's this wonderful villain. Oh no! Who is just very arrogant, incredibly rich, think he owns the world. All right, I won't do a, a huge spoiler. I'll just give you a little hint. They, I already know. <laughs> what is it? It's disappointing. No, no, it's not disappointing. It's oh. great. No, oh. no, it's great. Okay, okay. They, they, she, she's facing him. She's in this huge drug factory. Yeah. And he says, and she says, where's the boss? Bring me to your leader. And they're all trying to see if they can get her, but they won't. He, she won't let her them get near her. She just has the gun. And finally, by surprise, this big, huge number one villain appears from the back and says, "Ah, I've been waiting for you. I've been wanting to meet you." And he sits down. And he says, "Let's talk." And she, he starts doing the thing that he's done to all the other characters in the movie. He's all pretentious. He's all powerful. He's all knowing. He's all humiliating. He's doing all that stuff. And she does something that is delightful and surprising to me. And I'm saying, great, she's going back to who she was in the 7-Eleven, in the convenience store. 
what she does is she uh, deep blue sees him. Okay. If you've seen Deep Blue Sea, yeah, she does that. And it's, <laughs> okay. It's a, and it's a huge surprise, and it's okay. just awesome. And I'm going, this is going to be great. Okay. It's not great because she goes right back to being morose again. However, it's very good. I rec- yeah, there, that's part of the final fight scene. She takes on every single person in this huge warehouse of you know drugs. She, All right. takes, she takes on everybody. It's it's Korean. It's the kind of thing that you're used to from old boy. You know, she just starts wading through them, but she does it with that frozen face. You know, if you show, show the other picture, she does it all with a frozen face. And she also, you know, I'm sort of going, and then, and that's fine. That's a great fight. So I'm recommending you watch the first 10, 15 minutes. Then you fast forward immediately to the last 20 minutes. <laughs> and then, no, not, not the last 20, maybe the last half hour. But then the, it's not over yet. There's still another villain who is responsible for the ballerina situation. Huh. And she finally confronts him. Okay. And I'm going, this is going to be great because she's learned from what she, she she's going to deep blue see him too. And they're on the beach. They're on the beach. But no, she just remains stupid and depressed and morose throughout the, the climax. I'm going, why don't you, would you stop letting him talk? <laughs> stop letting him talk. Cause he's yeah. doing, he's doing everything that other villain did, yeah. which is, you know, he's trying to bring her down. She's, she's sort of like trying to find out why he did this to the ballerina. And I'm going, why do you care? Just yeah. put him down. Yes. This. Yes. But she finally does. Finally. Uh-huh. She does put him down in a very okay. satisfying way. Okay. You All know, right. I, I won't. I, I'm trying to remember whether anybody else uses a flamethrower in a famous action movie, but now I've let I've let I've let the cat out of the bag. She uses <laughs> a flamethrower on the beach. All right, and it's that's very a, cool. I'm going. Why didn't you do that? You didn't have to kill this movie. Should have been 90 minutes, but you spend the last 10 minutes letting him, you know, bend, you know, just kill him. Yeah. She finally does. As such, not as good as Saw X. Not as good as Totally Killer, but you watch those two fight scenes, well All worth right. the time. Well worth it. There you go. The beginning and then forward to the end. All yep. right. Next up, I came across this, Rick. Yes, you RDX. Did. And I was yes, like, what did. is I was like, what is this? I gotta hit a brick to see if you can check this out and talk about it. Oh my gosh. This is this is what this is what RRR has wrought. They would not have called it RDX if not for RRR, because RRR are also initials. So here you can see it's initials for Robert, Donnie, and Xavier. Yes. And and it's it is let me get the it is a Malaya Mal Malay Alam. Malay Alam is a section in the southern part of India, which has its own, it's its own little area. And it has its own cinema. It turns out that Bollywood is a lot of different Indian cinemas. It's Hindi cinema. It's Tengu cinema. Yeah. It's and this is Mele Alam cinema with the uh, Malayali people, the Indian state in the Indian state of Kerala. And this is the most successful movie of that form of. Indian film. This All right. Is, and it's clearly inspired by RRR. The huge difference and the very interesting difference is that RRR is totally slick. The men are really handsome. The women are really beautiful. Yeah. The, the production is really great. The sets are great. Yeah. Every the the musical numbers are Oscar winning. Mm-hmm. Not RDX. RDX is made by a bunch of normal people. They're, you know, they're a bunch of very talented, normal looking people. Yeah, you look at, you know, again, these are all super normal people. Also, semi, they do something else that Bollywood does a lot. They borrow or inspired by, by international film. And this looked like it was borrowed from Paper Tigers, except instead of using... Kung Fu, they're using karate. Really? Yeah. Except okay. that, yeah, oh yeah. This is this is a button. It's about three students of the karate teacher. The guy who's holding the nunchucks in the poster. Yeah. He's their teacher. 
Okay. And they're trying to live up to him. And they all have individual characters and they all excel at a different aspect of karate. One nice. guy is Mr. Punchy Punchy. One guy is Mr. Kicky Kicky. And the guy with the headband, he's the he's the um, Noonchak guy. All right. And when he's unleashed, and it's it's still a two and a half hour movie, and it's got, I think, I counted six fight scenes. And they're all in very, very individual places. Every single fight scene is in a different locale. So they're using the locale to to fuel the fight scene. Yeah, this, uh, they, I mean, and also these guys are incredibly popular in their area of India. So they, they, they have, this is this huge fight scene in a famous melee um, uh, carnival. They have this huge fight scene all over this carnival. And at the end of the carnival, they blow it up. They blow up the carnival. <laughs> <laughs> and it's all super real. And there's like no sets in this movie at all. It's all on the actual melee streets. There's a huh. huge fight at the end in this little section of the slums. And it was like, they're just using all of that. So again, and nice. the choreography is very clever. The choreography is done by a very famous, <laughs> probably the most famous choreographers in India because they go all throughout India. Okay. Not just melee. They also do the Hindi stuff. Their name is Anbari, and it turns out they're a set of they're twins. They're two twin choreographers, and one got into the uh, film business first, and then the other one joined them. And they became a duo who are attached at the hip, basically, and do all the choreography. And in this movie, they cover a lot of the. the <laughs> What they love doing is they love, and also the editor on this is awesome as well. One of those three actors will start an action. They'll cut the action. One of the stuntmen will replace them. And then in slow motion, and then they'll cut to the last action. So each one of the actions is in three parts. But okay. it's not disjointed. They do it all one after the other. So it's like fast slow, fast slow. It's like yeah, yeah, yeah. And I'm going. This is super clever. <laughs> this is really. The, and also, they'll do. And half the time it's realistic, and half the time it's Bollywood exaggeration. Yeah, and, I'm and down you never for that. know. Yeah. And you never know when it's going to show up. You okay. Don't know whether the punch is going to be realistic or the punch is going to be slow motion. It's yeah. all exact. It's awesome. It's fun. The rest of it, you can take or leave. Because, okay. you know, it's the usual drama. It's still two and a half hours long. Right. But they try to make the fight, again, fast forward to the fights. Yeah, yeah. It's okay. no, it's, it, and also, the other thing I wasn't happy about is by the end of it, it all becomes punching again. By the end of it, they just say, you know, they triumph at the end. So, so they... The villain gets the villain gets out of jail on bail, uh huh, and they just track him down and beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Why is that hilarious? That's kind of hilarious. Yes, it, it is. The whole movie is just. I mean, I spent the whole time not going. Ooh, I spent the whole time going. This <laughs> is fun. That's hilarious. And also, I didn't miss anything. I said, okay, let me go to the next fight. All right. Yeah, yeah. I mean, I watch as much. I yeah. I treated watching it the way they treated the fight scenes. Because once I, the fight scene was finished, I said, yeah. "Okay, I'll I'll keep watching it right. until I get bored." Yeah, yeah. With the with the with the Indian drama. Yeah. Okay, yeah. fast forward to the next one, <laughs> and then and they start fighting. I go, "Okay, watch this one. Watch this one." Yeah. And there's there's six fights. The musical numbers they have a couple of musical numbers, but again, not as sharp. R R R just has the best one of all time. This one is good. It's fine. Yeah. But yeah. It's, it's nothing nothing compared. But the fights. Right. Good the job. Fights. All right. Good job. Because it has realism. So, it's cool. Copy that. Oh, now we do this next one. Oh, my God. Oh, here we go. I'm excited. I'm excited. It, the well, Flying should. Swordsman. Rick, it, I saw the trailer. I was like, oh, my God. I have to watch this. I didn't get a chance to watch it yet, but I know you got to it before me. Rick, Yeah. good or bad, The Flying Swordsman? Well, at first, I was like, WTF, man. Now, I knew the flying swordsman, of course, is the term for wuxia, which is 
flying swordsman movies, heroic chivalry films. Yes. It's the kind of thing, it's basically, it's always been the ancient Chinese version of the Marvel Cinematic Universe. It's all these guys with individual powers, individual costumes, individual names, who announce themselves when they walk into the room. That's Wu Sha. The greatest proponent of Wu Sha at the Shaw Brothers was Chu Huan, who was doing all these amazing movies. He would just, they were just, they, I call them no no trap door remains unopened. It's no trap door remains unopened. It's just, and it's all like old time serials where, you know, there's one, there's, there's one cliffhanger after another. And a lot of them were, were based on books by this guy named Jin Yong, who's also known in the West as Louis Cha, who I was surprised he, he, he died in 2013. I thought he had died a long time before that. But no, he, he was. And this movie is based on one of, again, Jin Yong's books, which was called Brotherhood. No, no. It was called Fox Volant of Snow Mountain. It was written in 1959. So it was based on that. And so I thought it was going to be the same thing. <laughs> this movie is, it's done again by a bunch of young Chinese filmmakers who want to, you know, break into the business, but they're working for China's largest streamer, which is IP, yeah. right? And so they made this huge homage to the wuxia genre yeah. and to the wuxia movies, but they're doing it they're, they're clearly fans of Christopher Nolan. Oh. Because basically the first half of this movie is Memento. Oh, wow. Also, it's an homage to Shaw Brothers because I maintain, and I want you all to watch this movie on the high eye streaming service and tell me if there's any actual location used. I think this was all in a studio. This was all on a set on the Chinese version of the volume which is what Marvel uses, what Disney uses now, that huge set with the electronic uh, yeah. uh, stuff. But I swear this was all done on, on, on sets. So as such, it has that kind of hyper-artificial, hyper-realistic artificiality that Shaw Brothers films had. Yes, yes. Because those were mostly on sets, but this is even better. And it has a great, and also, but with the reason it's like a memento film, while well, it's like a Christopher Nolan film, because the, mo the movie starts, you know, it's eight villains, eight villains trying to find this MacGuffin, because they try to get this, oh yeah, this, this poster is very accurate. <laughs> it's very <laughs> accurate to this movie. It's everybody's going every which way but loose. And they're all just, they're all incredibly somber and all, not somber, they're all, they're all wild characters. They all have individual characters. But about, I don't know, maybe a quarter of the way through, maybe a third of the way through, stuff starts, Christopher Nolan stuff starts happening. Memento, Tenant stuff ha starts happening. Yeah. Which, and I don't know if that's from the novel, because the novel was mostly about the battling between these eight families, because they have these eight villains who are trying to get this map to the ultimate treasure. But they're all having wars within each other in the book. In the movie, they just cut it down because the movie is, again, like 90 minutes long. Yeah. No, the mo no this movie is an hour 46, so they're trying to do more. Oh, okay. Um, and, uh, but it's all about trying to find this map. Right. But things will happen in a scene. And then suddenly words will come up on screen saying five years later. And then something will happen. And then, and then more words will come up saying, saying three years ago. And then they'll say, <laughs> I mean, they start doing this all the time. You huh. don't know where you are anymore. I didn't know where I was, but I didn't care because it was all fascinating because they were clearly doing, they were having fun with the wuxia genre. Nice. But the, uh, the one thing that was bothering me is that they kept building to fights that didn't happen. Show the poster again. You notice nobody's touching each other. Yeah, okay. They're all swinging, leaping, flying, pushing, pointing. Nothing connects. They're constantly building.
showing up to fights that don't quite happen. And I'm just going, this is incredible. <laughs> this movie, it's it's wild and it's frustrating, but it's also really good. And it isn't until the last three quarters. Again, once they <laughs> once they hit the 90 minute mark, yeah, they said, okay, the plot's done. Let's go. And the whole movie, again, show the poster. Most of the movie looks like the poster. Do you have that other picture of the two girls fighting that I sent you? Uh, no. That's oh, not- shoot. Well, I know you can you can put it up someplace. But in yeah. any case, suddenly it turns into Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. They have a fight between two women. They actually fight. And it's clearly uh, based on the fight between the two girls in uh, the, in Hero, excuse me, not Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, excuse me. This is Hero, the fight between the, the nature fight, the fight in nature. Yeah, 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 okay. Yeah, yeah. In, in Hero, this was clearly based on that, but it's it's just like they, <laughs> they walk through a curtain and they're in a beautiful technicolor land because up till then they were in the monochromatic gray and white land. Yeah. But once yeah. they get into that new land, all bets are off and the fights start happening. And All shit right. goes down, man. Shit goes down big time. Nice. And it was like, yeah, so it's like Li Qiao was the director who worked, and the producer is the guy who did Brotherhood of Blades 1 and 2. Um, okay, okay. And uh, the... Uh, Those are oh, entertaining. Yeah. yeah, and also Kao Hua and Cheng Chuan Yong did the choreography, and they both worked on House of Flying Daggers and Hero. There you go. Boom. There it is. There you got the picture. That's where they go into Happy Land. Nice. Uh, it's just it again. At first, I was I was frustrated and said, "Oh, I'm I'm going to fast forward to the fights," but I couldn't. I couldn't yeah. find the fights. The fights were so <laughs> were so. You know, here, the fight starts here. Yeah. Ten minutes later, the fight goes there. Half an hour earlier, three years later. You know, it's just it just yeah. was amazing. And, but the villains are really good. The villains are also from Hong Kong cinema. Nice. And, uh, and Kung Fu, because uh, just, yeah, I could, all of these movies I could watch again. Because they're, nice. they're, they're very meaty. They're, they're, these are delicious. These are pumpkin spice movies. Ooh. This nice. is a pumpkin spice smoothie, all of these movies. <laughs> yeah. So, so yeah, right, again. Right. Guys, Quick, little. I got to get a little, little yeah. recommendation. Uh, yeah. All you martial arts movie lovers, I'm sure you guys already know about this film. Rick knows. But one of my favorites is The Magic Blade with uh, T. Lung. That's one of that's, my favorites. That's Chu Wong. Chu Wong yeah. directed that. If you guys have not seen uh, Magic Blade, check that out. It's a classic. Yeah, just, just see where it's playing. Uh, uh, if you have your uh, – check your computer to see where you can watch The Magic Blade. See if it's on Amazon Plus or, uh, right, or whatever. Right, yeah. It, but it yeah, Magic play. Blade, because yeah. also Magic Blade was based on the Man with No Name Spaghetti Westerns. Yeah. Because he had T. Lung have his sword. Uh-huh. He wore a serape. <laughs> he wore a poncho. And yeah. he had his sword in a holster. It's so good. He would spin his sword because it looked uh, like a tonfa, and he'd put it in yeah. his holster. And put so the, good. It, it's a great movie. It's one yeah. of my favorite uh, Chu Wan yes. um, uh, Wu Shaos. Yes. Yes. All so, right. Yeah. All right. Now, awesome. Now, now we're stuck back on Disney Plus. <laughs> now we're stuck. All right. Now so now Disney that Plus. it is over, Rick, Ahsoka, was it worth it? Did they waste their time? What's going no, on? No, neither of those two things. Okay. It's somewhere in between those two things. Okay. Because we talked about it last episode. We talked about it in the uh, September episode. Yeah. And we hadn't. I hadn't seen the finale yet. I saw the finale. Okay. <laughs> At first, I had a, I had a, um, what was it? Uh, what, what was the f- uh, first of the new? I had the Force Awaken. I had the Force Awaken syndromes because yeah. I watched the finale and I went, well, "That was good. Uh, yeah, that was good. Yeah, uh, that was good. Yeah, I like that." And then yeah. I, I sat there and I talked to the wonderful Elisa. Grant, you know, who comes with us to the Comic Con and stuff. And I talk to her every Wednesday. We talk about what movies we watch that week. We don't do it on YouTube. Maybe yeah. I'll suggest that we do it on YouTube next time. Sure. But but we both sort of went, that was that was really 
Because also I love Dave Filoni, and I want Dave Filoni to do well, because yeah. I loved his authorial hand. But this movie, this finale, was basically, I realized, after it sank in, was pretty much unsatisfying in every possible way. Yeah. And it was like, oh, <laughs> what a shame. Uh, Michael says uh, he enjoyed it, but it seemed like it was rushed at the yeah. end. Oh, yeah, it was. I enjoyed it, too, until the end. Yeah. And I think back because I wanted it to. I was getting all excited about the ending. This is going to be great. This is going to be great. And when it wasn't great, I just sort of went, oh, good. Yeah, I still love you, Dave. I still hope you get to do a sequel to this and set this up. But you didn't set it up well. Mm. It just sort of left me. It just kind of dropped me off. Yeah. It dropped me it dropped me off in the desert. It's like Well, uh, I was excited to eventually check out the show at some point just to see uh what the big deal was with Thrawn. And I, I came across a couple of uh comments and, and some reviews and they were like so the Thanos of Star Wars, this guy is not built up to be. He's like this military genius. He's always ten steps yeah. ahead of the of the heroes, and yeah. they were like, "Well, they made him look like an idiot." Well, no, I don't think they made him look like an idiot. Okay. They made Ahsoka look like an idiot. Oh, they, they made us look a little bit like idiots because <laughs> I mean, he just he was ten steps ahead, and he got away. Hmm. And okay. okay uh, and all, they had the big fight again between Ahsoka and uh, Inosanto. And that was a good fight. But again, and also all those, uh, all those uh, stormtroopers in the background are all zombies. They right. were, they're made into zombies. And Is that like, good or bad? Well, at first I said, interesting. Okay. And then later I went, bad. <laughs> it was like, oh. I mean, I spent a lot of time. Why did you do that? Why did you do that? Yeah. Both Marvel and both all of Disney seems to seem to have lost the ability to tell a cohesive story. As a writer, I know you. If you have a setup, Alfred Hitchcock said this: If you create tension in the audience, you are duty bound to release it. You are duty bound to release the tension, or else you have an unhappy audience. Yeah. And all Marvel and, and, and Star Wars seem to be doing now is doing the setup, but not doing the payoff. And so they're, they're getting what they deserve, which is unhappy audiences going, this is not, we love you. We want to love you. Mm -hmm. Indiana Jones, we want to love you. Star Wars, we want to love you. Superhero, Marvel superheroes, we want to love you. Please stop not letting us love you. Stop doing this. Yeah. I mean, I watch a little bit of the new uh, um, South Park uh, uh, movie, which... Uh, it was hilarious, by the way. <laughs> oh, yeah, which, you know, enter, enter the Pandaverse. Pandaverse? The Pandaverse. Into, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And yeah. The, the Pandaverse. The Pandaverse. Yeah. Pandur. Yeah, it was not hilarious. Not Panda. And, of yeah, course, one pretty... of the main villains of the whole movie is Kathleen Kennedy. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> And I went, okay, I'm not alone. Yeah. So, yeah, Ahsoka was disappointing. Uh, yeah. Fan Ming Q did the choreography okay. in Ahsoka, the stunt fight coordinator. And he did a fine job when he was allowed, but at the same time. Yeah. Yeah. Fans are tired of, of, of seeing, this is what I'm seeing, fans yeah. that are tired of, they're, they're tired of Ahsoka the White. Ahsoka the White, Ahsoka with no really personality. Well, oh. she wasn't Ahsoka the White. Did, no, she had no personality at the beginning. When she turned into Ahsoka the White, she should have gotten personality, but ah, they didn't. Okay. They just she was the same as she was the first. I forgot who described it, but basically, I think it was like Screen Crush or New Rockstar. Okay, we both said, "Oh no, it was the um, uh, that guy who does the uh, uh, movie." When he's trying to sell a movie to the producer, I forgot what those things are called. It's a whole bunch of YouTube uh, um, things. But she says she just stood there with her arms crossed. Yeah, yeah. And that's all. And and he was right. And that's a shame. Yeah. And now, Loki. All right. Now, Loki season two. 
I am of the minority. I was not a fan of the Loki season one. I did like two episodes. I liked two episodes of Loki right. season one, but overall, I was not a fan. Um, I, it felt like bad Doctor Who, the first season of Loki. Well, you <laughs> you hit the nail on the head. Oh, I, I do not call this Loki. I call it Doctor Hookie. <laughs> okay. Because first of all, uh -huh. they're going to finish with Doctor Hooky, and then Doctor Who's coming on to November twenty fifth on okay. Disney Plus. The new Doctor Who is coming on Disney Plus. Oh, really? Okay. All so right. the opening of the episode this week, <laughs> it starts basically in the TARDIS. You see, it's what the they're doing the opening of the Doctor Who. Okay. They're, go they're going through the uh, they're going through the time streams, but it looks like the opening of Doctor Who. And I'm going, is that is it this obvious? I sent you a picture of, of the new Doctor Who and I'll find Loki it. side. I'll by find side. it while you're talking. Yeah, yeah. And it's like, so this is Doctor Who. Keaton. absolutely no question. He's wow. a time traveler throughout the whole thing, trying to set things right. He's learning stuff. Okay. And as such, we'll have to see again how this ends. Because I'm enjoying the episodes. It's it gets pretty violent, it gets pretty dark. It has a wonderful bunch of actors and a wonderful bunch of characters. Uh, but it again, it's being show run by the Rick and Morty producer. And I don't mm. and and I don't want any more multiverses. Right, right. I right. mean, because this you know uh, they're producers of multiverse of madness. The stunt fight coordinator is Lloyd Bateman who work, also worked on Hawkeye, and he was the assistant stunt fight coordinator on another one of my favorite horror movies, Malignant. So I like the action. You like the action, okay. I like the editing. But again, I'm not going, I can't pass, there we go. Dr. Hookie. <laughs> or is it, what's the, is the O in o, um, um, Loki is, is a long O, so it's Dr. Hokey, <laughs> Doctor Hokey. So, but are you enjoying it so far? Are you, are yes, you, I am enjoying. Okay, it. I'm, it's extremely well made. Again, wonderful actors. But let's see how it ends. Let's see if it's just a setup for something else. Uh, how's oh, yeah, our there boy, we go. Uh, how's our boy here, Keith? He's awesome. And all nice. of this uh, beautifully made, uh, very interesting. As a science fiction writer, I mean, I appreciate the concepts. Okay. But again, if any if if Marvel and Star Wars shows on Disney Plus has taught me anything, is that I cannot pass judgment until the last second of the last episode. That's, that's smart because they can completely yeah. screw screw you over. Yeah. So so, so far so good as of right now. I'm compared enjoying to, it compared to season one. Well, I enjoyed season one. Too. Oh, okay. Never mind. Okay. Yeah, but I'm enjoying this one more. All right. All right. Copy that. All right. So we're going to wrap up this part of the action film autopsy. So those of you that are came in late, hey, appreciate you coming in. But we're going to do the really quick Rick's recap of every film and show discussed tonight. And then after that, I just did we're going to go into uh, Rick's just top 10 while, horror films. I just, I just did it while you weren't looking. <laughs> Okay, do it again. Uh, okay, so put up put up the posters. Okay, <laughs> all right, here we go. Yeah. Saw X. Let me get back. There we go. All right, all right. Totally killer. Why does it sound like Ellen Rickman there? <laughs> I don't know. <laughs> Hello, right. Clarice. You look like you sound like a, a ballerina. Oh, a ballerina. Okay. RDX. All right. The Flying Swordsman. All right, there we go. Oh, oh, we're teetering three, a little bit. Wait a minute, wait a minute. Three, three years ago, five years later, <laughs> half an hour before. <laughs> All right. Ahsoka. <laughs> okay. <laughs> and so far, as of right now, uh, here we go, here we go. Dr. Hookie. 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 <laughs> yeah, there you go, there you go. All right, we're teetering there a little bit. Okay. okay. No, no, no comment until the last episode. Okay, all right, all right. Copy that. All right, now it is time 
uh, happy Halloween, everyone, that everyone is watching right now. It is time to get into uh, Rick's picks here. Rick, before we go do the countdown, what is, what is some of the reasons why you picked these titles? Well, ladies and gentlemen, I've been seeing movies for more than 60 years. So I've, I've, uh, I've started, uh, also, I, I've started in horror before most of you were born. <laughs> so <laughs> I have written horror novels. This is three, my, three of my horror novels. This is another one of my no horror novels. This is, this is my this, uh, Blood Demons, which is the history of the vampire. I have also written an entire horror section in the world of exploitation films. So, so I know a lot about horror. I also was the, uh, the assistant editor of uh, Movie Monsters magazine and Famous Monsters of Filmland magazine. So I grew up with horror. So I knew horror from the beginning. I also, as a writer, know that horror is fear of the unknown. Slasher movies are not really horror. Slasher movies are fear of the known, which is terror or murder or slasher movies. Horror, however, is fear of the unknown. So I started, and also I saw these movies before everybody, you know, before everybody ripped them off. These, the great horror movies started in the 1930s, but then everybody ripped them off. Yeah. And so all, all you youngsters, <laughs> you're, you, you're not enjoying the originals as much because you've seen all the knockoffs. So you're used to all the knockoffs. And of course, the first great horror movie was in black and white. And does anybody watch black and white anymore? So well, that's I why do. I chose. I do. There yeah. you go. That's why I chose. These are the greatest. These are not. I think these are the greatest horror, horror movies I've ever seen. Yeah. But remember. Is, yeah. I'm not intrinsically a, I'm not a fan of murder or villains. I don't like villains. I like heroes. I like detectives. I don't like, I don't like the villains. Yeah. This is your so own like personal you. picks. These are my favorites. Yes. Yes. And I'm, I'm digging the shirt, by the way. I forgot to tell you that. Oh, yeah, I purposely, of course, I yeah. wore this. That was great. Yeah. I can only wear this once a year. Yes. Well, first up, we have two honorable mentions before we get to the list, starting oh. with number 10. Up end. first, is, and both of these are two of my favorites. No, too. actually, we should start from number one. Oh, oh. we should start from number you one. You want to go one to I'm ten? Going through time. We're going through time. Okay, we can one, do that. Yeah, we're do I'm doing an order of release. Okay, okay so, so no honorable mentions one. right now, and then the list. Right. Honorable mentions are just later on. Go ahead. Okay, all right. So Mr. Vampire... Classic is an, is an honorable mention, but honorable that's, mention. that's number one. That's not number one. Yeah. No, no. Well, I'm gonna, well, I'm okay, gonna get it, honorable mentions out of the way, and then we no, get no, 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 no. Do the honorable mentions at the end. Okay, we can do that. All right, we'll they, do that because they're part of. I mean, they're in the correct order. Gotcha. Okay. okay. Next up, we have number, number one. one. Here we go. Of course, Frankenstein. Yeah, Frankenstein. Cl classic. People, you have no idea. I did not. Of course, this came out in 1931. I had been born for more than 20 years after that yeah however i do know when i grew up i met people who had seen it when it first came out people were screaming people were fainting people were falling apart it was a huge hit and even today it's still one of the great classics and it has pathos and it has it's smart it's beautifully yeah. done by the wonderful director james whale and it's an absolute classic it is the foundation of horror movies yes it's alive. And then this they, blew me away. They this followed blew it up away. with The Bride of Frankenstein. Go. This blew me away, man. James James Whale was, you know, a tortured, closeted homosexual. And so he was he was, you know, he did Frankenstein hoping that it was liked and it was loved and it was a huge hit. So the studio said, "Do whatever you want." And he went, "Boom." And again, Bride of Frankenstein is so good. It's just <laughs> outlandish, hilarious, yes, frightening, hilarious, sad, mm -hmm. tragic, mm -hmm. amazing. Yep. It's it's a, a it's black. It's a black comedy. Yeah. We belong dead. Yes, yes, so good, so good. 
awesome. this one, speaking of speaking of legit, yeah, horror yeah. Dracula, man. I couldn't. I saw I saw Dracula at the same time that I saw Frankenstein, and Dracula with Bella Lugosi just didn't do it for me. It was too. It was too mannered. But when I saw Peter uh, Peter Cushing, especially as Van Helsing, yeah, and Christopher Lee as Dracula, I went, "Now that's Dracula." Oh I yeah. I mean, his first major. I mean, the first time you see him as the vampire when he reveals himself as a vampire, it's like effing unforgettable. Yeah. And the whole thing was just, a, and also the climactic sequence is still one of the great action moments of all time. When Peter Cushing leaps on the table, runs across the entire room, leaps up onto the curtains, pulls them down and the light goes on to Dracula. And then to keep Dracula in the light, he takes two big candlesticks makes them into a crucifix, dong, holds it up against him. Ah, just still one of my favorite movies of all time, of any so genre. Good. So yeah. good, so good. Just a great movie. Number four? Now, I have not seen this one, Rick, but this yeah. looks wild. The Devil Rides Out. Look, I'm sold. I'm sold already. Christopher and well, Lee. you should be. Now, this is this is the, the reward that Hammer Films gave Christopher Lee for playing Dracula. He says, now you get to play a hero. And Dennis Wheatley did this series of, of, of books about a supernatural detective, a supernatural doctor, someone who investigates. And that's my favorite kind of horror movie where yeah. it's not just anything goes and let's just find ways to kill people. Because my, a matter of fact, my three novels, my, my books of the undead uh, were all about correcting horror movies that let left me hanging. And basically the thing I loved about Living Hell is I talked about the actual situation in religion and in the supernatural. And that's what the devil rides out is all about. It's not just the devil can do anything. It's also the great character that uh, Christopher Lee plays finds a way to do the correct thing to keep evil from winning. Nice. So it's 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 a wonderful. It's it's like he's the Sherlock Holmes of the supernatural. Oh Actually, yeah. There's All no right. question. That's exactly what he is. So That's yeah, awesome. It is awesome, and I highly recommend it. And I believe I saw it recently again. I'm trying to remember. It was on. I don't know if it was on Netflix, but again, just type yeah. in the, the title mm -hmm. and find out where you can watch it for free. Yeah. Prop. I bet you it'll be on Tubi. Yeah, there you go. Along with horror and Dracula and everything else. Yeah, Again, yeah. yeah, I'm sold on the poster too, like pretty yeah. much for sure. It's a great movie. Nice. It's going on the list. Now, now, Rick, now, when I reviewed this many years ago, <laughs> I was I was a little tipsy. I was on I was drinking the sauce. Okay, I was a little tipsy. Uh, but I understand, I totally get why people think it's a classic and why people really liked it. Mm -hmm. I thought the finale was hilarious, yeah. but but I understand. I understand. So next pick is Don't Look Now. Again, you are a perfect example of what I was talking about. You had seen all the other movies that came afterwards. So by the time you got to this, it didn't have the power. Also, you didn't see it in the cinema, did you? No. I saw it when it came out. This is Nicholas Roeck. This is an astonishing movie about the nature of the devil inside of you. This is all about trusting yourself and the terrible horror that can occur if you don't. And this is, it also has one of the great sex scenes in yeah. cinema. Yes. The most it, realistic looking sex yeah. scenes the, in uh, cinema. Uh, yeah. Apparently it was real. But what? You know, apparently it was. That's the rumor. But Wow. It also is a story. It is a beautifully made movie where every single shot adds to the aura. Yeah. And I saw it. I will never. This is one of the great uh, theatrical experiences I've had in a movie theater. Wow. Uh, along with, you know, 2001 of Space Odyssey and Dr. No and stuff. It was in the movie theaters and it just it just permeated my soul. And the ending when it happened came as a 
Oh my fucking God. Yeah. That's the price you pay. I mean, basically to explain it to you, that was his inner demon. Yeah. Yeah. I, I understand everything. I get it. Yeah. But at the time when I watched it the first time, I was, yeah. I was, all, I was drinking yeah, it a little bit. It was too late. I saw yeah, it when it, too... it, I saw it when it came out yeah. and it was just like, yeah, yeah. Pretty, yeah. pretty astonishing. I don't regret work, buying it though. I don't regret buying it. It is the only. I may I, when I re when I revisit it. Yeah. I may I may like it a lot more. I think it was the first work of horror art. It was ah. cin- it was cinema. It was it, also I loved it because it's one of those movies like Memento that could only be done as a movie. You couldn't ah. put this on stage. You couldn't do this as anything out there than a movie. Right. Right. And so it worked extremely well for me in that respect as well. Yeah, yeah. There's a, a a lot of fans for that for that film, yeah, but it's a great this movie. one this one's a great pick, Rick. I yep. love this movie. It blew okay. me away when I saw it for the first time. The Exorcist, man. Another work of man of cinematic art. Yeah. Uh, yes, The Exorcist. So uh, good. Yeah, it's it's a classic. Um, it's again about the nature, not necessarily of the devil, but certainly about demons. Mm-hmm. And uh, they're po- and it's also just beautifully, beautifully done. It's just so good. Max it's Song so Chief. good. <laughs> yeah, it really is great. Uh, well, I have to ask you now, since it's this good, is yeah. one of your this is one this is one of your picks. Yeah, the uh, Exorcist uh, Believer film that's in the theaters right now. Are yeah. you interested in checking that out at some point and talking about it? Yes. Okay. I have I, it. I, I have it to see. I haven't. I chose not to watch it this week. Okay. Why is that? I'm, I'm over. I'm overdosed. Oh, okay. I watched, I watched a bunch of. I mean, I was so happy with Saw X and Totally Killer that I yeah. didn't want to fuck it up by uh, seeing right, something right. that just pissed me off. Yeah, <laughs> nice, nice. Copy that. Yeah, Exorcist is great. Oh, it's so good. So good. Have, did you so see good. that? In, did you see that in theater too? Oh yeah. Oh man, oh, yeah. was the crowd tripping out? <laughs> oh yeah. I mean. <laughs> I'm trying to remember where I saw it. I, I could have sworn, you know, I remember seeing it alone, but in yeah. a theater. Well, I think, oh, what, year, what year was it? Tell me what year it was. Uh, for The Exorcist? Down. Yeah, I think it was 73. I'm going to look it up right now while you're talking. Because I'm pretty sure I was working at a movie yes. theater in... 73? Mm-hmm. Yeah, I was working at a movie theater in Orange, Connecticut. And so I saw it alone in the oh, theater. Oh God! Oh God! Because <laughs> also I was a I was a um, a pro not a protege. Uh, uh, I was I was learning I was learning how to be a projectionist, uh, thirty five and seventy millimeter projectionist. Uh, so he showed you know so I was able to put it I was able to rack it up and show it to myself, and it was like oh my oh it was just amazing, such a great movie. Next up is uh, Lady Fat Bloods, one of her favorite horror films of all time, Carrie. She has good taste. Look who nice. she married. Yeah. <laughs> oh, thank you, sir. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Uh, yes, yeah, a great movie. So good. I I was so disappointed with the remake. Oh yeah. Yeah, like just what, they just missed they they missed what was special about this movie. You I, can't just I, redo the scenes, and that's I, it. I'm not crazy about Brian De Palma, but to to my mind, this is his best movie. Wow. Yeah. This classic. Classic. For sure. Next on Rick's list, Alien. Another favorite. Lady Fabulous favorite and mine. Great Alien. science fiction film. Great horror film. Yeah. Um, yeah. And also, I was on the set. Oh, so that's hard. right. That's right. That's right. Yeah. So it was hard for me not to. But no. I've been on a set of a lot of stuff that wasn't as good as this. Right. I'm just very unhappy with what Alien has become. I the, get you. The I most get recent it. Alien I thought was one of the most hateful things I'd ever seen, and I was very, very yes. unhappy with it. I agree. <laughs> I agree with you. <laughs> Especially because, yeah. Were you blown? I mean, like, obviously you were blown away, but the audience's reaction when this came out, like. Well, I saw it. Since we we had done, I was I was the head writer of the official Alien tie-in magazine. Oh, that's right. And yeah. I had held the Alien head in my hands, and so I knew so much about it already. Nothing didn't. I loved. I thought the movie was just terrific, but nothing blew me away because I knew everything that happened. Right. Yeah. I saw. I mean, I talked to everybody. I saw. Seen the, the spoilers. Effects. Yeah, you saw that. Yeah. yeah. So, 
it was just, but it was so thrilling and so exciting and so well done. When I put it all, I was at the screening, the New York premiere, the cast and crew screening. Yeah. And it was like, and then we went, I went with my, my buddy who also worked at Famous Monsters magazine and we went to uh, see it in the theaters and there the audience was like, yeah, screaming. Yeah. Nice. Now this one, I've never, I've never heard or seen this one, Rick. I figured, yeah. Hell has no boundary. This is my representation. I strongly recommend. <laughs> this is why I wanted my uh, honorary mentions to be at the end. This represents the Shaw Brothers horror movies. This is one that I remembered seeing. Unfortunately, as I remember it, it may not be the actual movie that I saw. I may have put all the great moments of the Shaw Brothers horror movies together in one big movie in my mind. Ah. Because as I remember, the Shaw Brothers horror movies, the way I, do, I term them is no orifice goes unstabbed. And also it's maggot otastic. <laughs> okay. Every single one of these movies is basically about a disgruntled soul who takes revenge from beyond the grave. These are all Chinese demons. And yeah. Chinese demons, they love the maggots. They love the worms. They yeah. love the knives. I swear at the beginning of this movie, it's, it's a very simple story. A demon is upset, and the demon takes revenge on a variety of innocent and not so innocent people. But yeah. they do it in outlandish and freaky ways that are designed to, to freak the audience out. It doesn't have to make sense. Right. It just has to freak you effing out. And so there's this scene. These were all done on location. These aren't on sets like the show, like the Kung Fu movies. It's locations. And there's this young lady in a tiny little Hong Kong apartment. You see she's in the kitchen. You see she's you see she's cutting carrots. Yeah. You see the city behind her. And you see behind and also see in the corner, because all the Hong Kong apartments are too are very small. So this is all, you know, packed all in. There's another, she takes one kind of knife and she puts it down and takes another kind of knife. And the knife she puts that puts down on the table while she's cutting starts to vibrate. It's just vibrating more and more and more and more and just vibrating more and more and more and more making, and, and it starts to make kind of little clacking noises, clackety, 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 clack. And it's finally, and you see, and you're all filming it from the, from here. Okay. And you see the woman's face and you see the knife behind her. Yeah. And she, it's like, and she suddenly begins to, you know, what's that noise? What's that noise? And finally, and it's clacking more and more and vibrating more and more. And she slowly turns around. And the moment she sees it, the knife shoots into her eye. Nice. Bam. Sold. I'm sold. Bam. And it's like, and I remember being in the theater going, wow, Jesus, oh, <laughs> Jesus Christ. And, and of course, then there are a lot of maggots. There. And I remember also the finale of this movie is that the possessed woman tries to escape from this Shaolin monk who is trying to exorcise her. Yeah. And the climax is in the Hong Kong airport. And they're just hurling bolts and stuff and crap at each other and it's just bam bam and I, i'll never forget because i was in that airport i knew the room that they were they filmed it in and they're just there's the shaolin monk and this this deep this this maggot spewing demon <laughs> battling each other in the airport i have to see this you yeah. have to see hell has no boundary you have to see hex you have to see the Boxer's Omen. I have seen that. That's one of the craziest, most insane movies I've ever seen. You guys need to see the Boxer's Omen. It is insane. Maggotastic, right? Yeah, it's insane, but entertaining as well. Human Lanterns, that's another fun one. Oh, that, that's one of the best because that's yeah. a kung fu horror movie directed yeah. by the great Sung Chung. Yeah, yeah, that's a with Lo Lei, yeah. 
But yeah, yeah, I'm sold on this. I got to check this out for sure. I'll ask and, boundaries, man. Uh, honorable mentions now. Uh, the, uh, there's one. There's oh, only yeah, one I forgot. Left. I'm sorry. Left. Okay, yeah, go ahead. All right, honorable mentions before the last one. Uh, Mr. Vampire, another classic. The Guyonchi yeah. movies. The, so good. The, just terrific. I mean, entertaining, kung fu, martial art, um, hopping vampire films. Yeah, comedy, everything. Yeah, scares, yeah, action, that's right. special effects, all just that good stuff. A complete entertainment. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Lam Ching Ying. Yes, yes. Yeah. And another favorite of mine, a Chinese ghost story. Again, out of all just... out of all the three films, uh, do you have a favorite one? Of the Chinese ghost story? Mm -hmm. Yeah, the first one. Of course, yeah. the first one. Two's really good, too. <laughs> Two is very good. But, you know, the first one is the first one. Yeah. Classic. So good. So good. The third, now the third one, that was kind of like a reboot. It's of the first of, one, kind of. Yeah, it just wasn't it didn't have the power. Yeah, we, yeah. They were getting to they were getting to the end of the Hong Kong, the golden age of the Hong Kong cinema. Right. But yeah, this horror, hilarious moments, great special effects, romantic effect. moments, exciting moments. Yeah, yeah, yeah. There's some Wu, Wu Ma's sexy of, moments. Yeah, Wu Ma's one of great one of his great performances as a yes. big swordsman. Oh yeah, I love him in that. Love him in that movie. And now we have some a little more recently uh, for Rick's last pick, The Conjuring, the first one. Yes. Well, that's not an honorable mention. That's on my top ten list. Yeah, I'm just, I'm just, I'm just segueing. And that again that. is that again yeah. is example of what I was talking about before, like um, uh, the guy who knows how to deal with, like the devil rides out. Here we have the Warrens who were supposedly who I met. Who are actually real life uh, supernatural busters, ghostbusters? Oh, you met the Warrens. Oh yeah, I met wow. the Warrens. They came wow. to my, the Amity, uh, I think, senior high school, and gave us gave my class a lecture. Now I, I talked to them afterwards because again, I liked, and that's what I did in my horror novels. I always like to set up the situation, and everything plays by the rules. Everybody plays by the rules. It's not just anything goes. You can figure this stuff out because the afterlife. God and the devil are part of the human experience. So the idea that it would not be human-based and they could get away with anything just didn't make any sense to me as a kid. So when I would see a movie where somebody went, no, 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 no. There's got to be, there's got, we can figure this out. Right. We just have to find out what the rules are because they're playing by a different set of rules. Yeah. We have to find out the rules. And yeah. I love it. In The Conjuring, that's what they do. Again, it's a great heart with wonderful actors, great direction, um, a terrific story. I love all three of the Conjuring movies, uh, even though the third one was more of a love story. But I said they earned the love story. The Warrens earned the love story. If you're constantly just going there for horror, you know, don't go. Just go it for the full uh, cinematic experience. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, I enjoyed the first two. I still haven't seen the third one yet. Uh, really cool. quick, really quick before we wrap it up. Uh, question for you, Rick. Your thoughts on the Legend of the Seven Golden Vampires? Again, it's what happens when uh, the the Hong Kong Chinese work with a English speaking company. In this case, they were working with Hammer, so that was a United Kingdom company. So what happens is that when they do that, they always say, "What do you want us to do?" I was talking about Yun Wu Ping, and and would go onto the set of the Matrix and not tell them the way the action should be. He said. He would say, what do you want me to do? And he would do what the directors tell him to do. So what would happen here is the goal. I mean, this could have been a great vampire kung fu movie, but instead they said to uh, Hammer Films, what do you want us to do? And, and of course, nobody, nobody understands Hong Kong films like the Hong Kong people. Right. But they didn't do that. They did. So it was watered down. It wasn't what it could have been. And also... I know on the basis of Blood Demons, the, mm. my, my most recent horror novel, Yeah, I know the history of vampires. And they, and they had, and of course, Guyonchi, they had Mr. Vampire. They had their own vampire legends, which they completely submerged to do it the way Hammer wanted. So it was kind of like, oh, well, could have been great. It was okay. It was still fun. It was yeah. still good. Yeah. But it wasn't great. Copy that, copy that. But what was great are, are these 10 picks, 10 Rick's picks. This is top 10 horror films. And I'm sure if I 
I'm sure he could do a top 20, top 30 if he, if he really wanted to. So who knows? We may update yeah. this list for next year. You know, we'll do, we'll add to it. We will add to it. So happy Halloween, everyone. And thank all of you badasses for watching. Don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. And Check smart the asses. And, and smart asses. asses. And yeah. wise asses. <laughs> Check the links in the description box below. Check out, go straight to Haya. That's right. Start a free trial. Check that link out in the description box, as well as the Urban Action Showcase and Expo. The event is a couple of days away. It's going to be exciting. Check it out. Go to the site. Buy some merch. And uh, I'll see you guys on the next one. A lot and, more. And if any of you guys are in New York, come to the Urban Action Showcase, which he did the ad for at the beginning. If all goes well, I will be there to, to help you. I will be there, there you to, go. See, to teach you Kung Fu. There you go. You can see Rick and all these amazing legends and there. tell you about Ninja. In person. Tell you about Ninja. Tell you about Ninja. Because <laughs> we're, doing, we're doing the anniversary of Revenge of the Ninja. Oh, it's going to be fun. So you're part and of I'm, that panel. I'm the Ninja Master. Oh, that's going to be a lot of fun. That's going to be uh, and hilarious as well. So, is Sam Furstenberg going to be there too? I hope so. That would be. I mean, amazing. I met I met a lot of them. It would have been wonderful. I met Shogasugi. I met uh, uh, oh, Michael Stone, who created the original yeah. Enter the Ninja. Yeah, and yeah, it yeah. would be lovely. But it's up to the wonderful Demetrius Angelo. He'll yes. come up with the magic. Shout out the magic to Demetrius. Guests. Yeah. All right, guys, keep watching horror films. Enjoy it, and all of cinema. And we'll see you guys. On the next one. Take care.